I think I've lied. This is exciting. Woohoo! First ever YouTube live stream. So I've been told strictly I've got to stick till half past three. So uh, make sure everyone who's going to join me is here. How are you all doing? Oh, while we wait, I want to say a big up to Lizzie Daly who set this up. What a cool thing. I don't know how she's done it. Just like that, she's whipped up over 100 nature heroes, wildlife broadcasters and filmmakers and conservationists and zoologists and biologists to uh, give you loads of live lessons on loads of interesting subjects. So um, I really hope you'll check out all the other ones that are still to come. I think she's got them coming up every single day through March and April, as well as the ones that have already been on. So check them out if you haven't seen them already. I think I've got people joining me. Thomas, hello. Sarah, hi. Oh, this is good. So I'm not going to be shouting out all the way through because I've got to give you a lesson. That's what I'm here to do. So uh, I better get on with it. How are you all doing, by the way? This is a weird time for us all, isn't it? I know it's very disorientating and very strange. Um, but at least we're all in it together and we can all, all communicate like this. So I'm going to hopefully, over the next 15, 20 minutes, give you some top ideas on how you might be able to attract wildlife to your patch, something that's super easy to do, super simple, and uh, I hope you might get on board with it. And while we're off work and off school, it gives us a bit of time to create some things at home. So I've got some arts and crafts ideas for you as well. Uh, I've written a few things down so I remember what I've got to tell you. So I hope you're all feeling comfy, get yourself a drink, settle in. <laughs> This is so cool. I've never done a live stream before, so I'm a bit overexcited. Um, so yes, hopefully you can, whether you've got a garden or not, maybe you've got a balcony, maybe you've got a little outdoor courtyard, or maybe you've just got a little front doorstep, back doorstep. Um, you only need small spaces for this, and hopefully it'll bring some wildlife into the patch where you live, and you'll be able to enjoy watching it and be completely fascinated by it and be able to learn about it too. Um, so for those of you that don't know me, my name is Naomi Wilkinson. I've been a children's television presenter here in the UK for 21 years. I spent a long time on Milkshake on Channel 5, reading out birthday cards and singing and dancing my socks off. And then for the last 11 years, I have been presenting for CBBC, um, a little bit of Country File as well. Um, but the main reason I'm here on these Earth Live lessons is because over my time with CBBC, I've made quite a few series with the BBC Natural History Unit in Bristol, my hometown. Big up to any Bristolians watching today. Um, so I made four series of a programme called Naomi's Nightmares of Nature. Uh, they sent me off around the globe to try and find the nasty nightmares of the natural world. Some that weren't half as terrifying as I thought they were going to be, and others that uh, scared my socks off. So I think that's called deadly nightmares of nature in some parts of the world. So you might know it as that if you don't live in the UK. But I also was lucky enough to present um, lots of series of Saturday morning live kids TV. They say don't work with children and animals. I say do both and do it on live TV because there isn't an, a thrill like it. <laughs> so I did two series of a show called Live and Deadly with the lovely Steve Backshall, who many of you will know from Deadly 60. And I believe Steve is going to be doing one of these live lessons um, soon. So keep watching Lizzie's channel and she'll let you know when that will be happening. And I also did two series of Wild with my lovely friends Tim Warwood and Razi Chinyanganya. And the, the premise behind all of those series was to encourage young people to get outdoors, to get active, to try new things, to step out of your comfort zone and uh, also to look for wildlife and to try and attract it to your patch. So I thought this might be a good idea to dig out some of the old ideas, things that I learnt while I was making those shows that really I loved and really work. I think that's the main thing. You do these things. People say, if you put these things out and about for the wildlife, it'll come. And it really works. So I would encourage you to try some of these ideas. So I've got five super simple ideas to give you in my little lesson. Uh, I've got another 15 minutes to, to cram them all in. So I'll get on with it. Number one, I've got a little jingle for you. Number one. Birds. It's all about birds. My favourite thing. I absolutely love birds. I didn't really know much about birds till I did Live and Deadly. And then I started to uh, have my eyes opened. I started to look up to the skies and notice them. 
And once you start looking at birds, honestly, they put a smile on your face. And that's what this is all about. Putting a smile on our face and enjoying wildlife, helping them out and enjoying them. So what are the best way? What's the best way to get wildlife like birds onto your patch near me? I hear you ask. <laughs> Good. Well, one of the best ways is to create a bird feeder. Yes, put some food out for them. Who doesn't love a nice meal? So look at this one that I made yesterday. Knock this up in no time at all. My homemade little bird feeder. So can you guess what I made it out of? A little juice carton. That's actually a milk carton I made that one out of. So how do you make it? Very quickly, you get a grown-up to help you cut a big space out the front so that the bird's can get to the food. I also cut a couple of wings to make it look a bit more cool so it can fly and to give access to a few more birds, the more the merrier. Then you need to make a little hole in the front and back to push a stick. That's an old chopstick that I just had in my drawer and that one's a little old lolly stick that I had as well. So you need to put holes on the other side that are slightly higher or lower so it doesn't clash in the middle because uh, that's your little perch for the birds to sit on while they eat. You want to leave a little tray about that big at the bottom you don't want that too deep and then fill that with seed after you've decorated it so I've painted mine stuck on some plastic uh, bottle tops I cut out some bits from an old fruit punnet some card to make the beak and the eyeballs little hole in the top thread some string through bit of bird seed in there Bob's your uncle you've got a brilliant simple cheap bird feeder there are so many ways to make bird feeders online google it um you'll find ones made of lego you'll find all sorts of ones but i particularly like this one uh so why not make a little bird feeder now it's important where you hang it you want to hang it on a branch of a tree but when birds feed they like to feel safe so if you can hang it somewhere near a kind of hedge or some shrubs some greenery so that the birds can dart to your feeder and then dart into safety, that's when they'll be happiest. So see if you can find a good spot for your feeder and be patient because they don't always come instantly, but they will come, I promise. So I'm gonna put this one up in my garden and then if a bird comes to it, I'm gonna try and take a photo and put it on my social media. So keep your eyes peeled for that. One other really, really simple bird feeder I saw once is just an apple cut in half. Now I know apples are precious at the moment, so maybe this is something to do when uh, everything has passed. Uh, but take an apple, cut it in half, get some black sunflower seeds that have got a really pointy end, and jab the little pointy end of all the sunflower seeds all over the, the core of the, uh, the skin of the apple, the peel. Um, so it looks like a little mini hedgehog. And then you can just put some string around that, hang that up, super simple, and the birds will love it. So be patient, put your bird feeders up, and then watch it, or put it somewhere where you can see the birds, because then you can enjoy watching them feeding. That's number one. On to number two. Need to get a drink. Cheers. Um, so, water. Water is a great thing to put in your garden. Any kind of water you can provide is one of the best things to bring wildlife into your patch. Obviously, building a huge pond is a massive undertaking. It will take loads of digging and hard work, and you need a lot of space, so leave that to the grown-ups. So a simple way you can put a mini pond into your garden is getting something like an old washing-up bowl. This was in my garage. That's why it's filthy. Um, but you could do any sort of sturdy, solid, strong bowl that hasn't got holes in the bottom. That's important. And then you need to dig a hole so you can sink it into the ground so that the top of the bowl is level with the ground so creatures can get in and out. Um, fill it with some aquatic plants and then uh, obviously put the water in once you've got it in place. If you put the water in first, it becomes really heavy and hard to move about. So put it in place first, fill it up with water. One of the main things you need to do is to provide an escape route for creatures though because you don't want anything falling in it and not being able to get out. Also be aware of young children, make sure it's somewhere safe uh, where children aren't going to fall into it. But a good way to make it safer is to put big rocks, stones, logs in it to sort of create a little stepping stone access point in and out for your creatures. So there you go, a little homemade pond. And if you don't have space to make a pond, how about providing a little bird bath, a little bird drink? Uh, they only need a little shallow dish of water, or you could use a dustbin lid turned upside down, or maybe an old baking tray, something like that. 
put that out for the birds, maybe up a little bit so it's a little bit off the ground away from cats. If you have got a cat, by the way, why not put a little jingle bell on its collar, give the birds a little bit heads up, the cat's coming, and then the birds will stay safe and the cat won't bring a bird to your house, which is never very pleasant, is it? So get the water in the garden and watching a bird have a bath is one of the best things you can see. On to number three. Bees, bees, right, next one is about my favourite bees, I've even worn my bee socks today, especially for this, right, bees, now bees in recent years, their populations have declined globally significantly, so we really need to look after our pollinators, they provide, I think it says, uh, estimated a third of food is pollination dependent, so Bees, butterflies, uh, moths, wasps, they're so important. We've got to look after them. How, though, do you provide a home for a bee? Well, you can make a bee hotel. Have you heard of that? What you need to do is get a cane, like a bamboo cane. These are super cheap to get hold of. And you can do a bit of tap dancing while you're at it. Um, so get a cane like this, because if I show you this way, you'll see down the middle, there's like a hole. So there's a little tunnel all the way through it and solitary bees love those little tunnels. So what you want to do is cut a cane into about uh, pieces of about 15 centimetres long. You get a grown up to help you do that uh, and then make a little bundle. These were some old pieces I just had my <laughs> run with They're not the perfect ones, but just to give you the idea. So tie them together. I've just used a few elastic bands to uh, fix those together little piece of string wrapped all the way around that. Again, pop that on a fence post or on a wall somewhere. Now, the thing you need to do this is make sure it's sturdy and not flapping about in the wind because the bees won't enjoy that. They like to feel nice and secure. So try and fix it so it won't be wobbling about in the wind. Um, somewhere sunny, dry and warm. They will be very happy in there. And then you can watch, hopefully, bees come and investigate. They might come in with pollen all over their bellies. They might take little bits of mud and leaves in to create the little cells where they will uh, have their little babies. So you can watch that and know that you're helping out the bees. Uh, my little top tip, once you've made your five-star bee hotel accommodation that will get a six-star rating on Bug Advisor, is to make a little sign near it as well. Give it a name. What are you going to call your bee hotel? Put that above it. Right, bees. Da 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 da. That's that. And you can also make a whole bee in a uh, whole insect hotel. Where you put your insect hotel will depend on what kind of species it attracts. So, up to you what you make. On to number four. So while we're talking about bees, you can feed the bees as well. Bees need the food, so they need pollen, nectar-rich flowers. How can you do that? You can plant some and you don't need a garden. If you haven't got a garden, and if you've got a garden, put them in the soil, put some seeds in, grow some flowers that the bees love. If you haven't got a garden, you can do it in a pot. Just get a little plant pot, fill it about two thirds full with compost, pop some seeds on, bit more compost, don't forget to water it and then watch your lovely flowers grow. Not only will they look beautiful and smell beautiful, but the bees will absolutely love them. They love lavender, by the way. That's a top one to do, lavender. They go mad for it. Do you want to hear my bee joke? I love jokes. Okay, my bee joke. What do you call a bee that's born in May? A maybe. <laughs> Another bee joke. I went to the pet shop the other day and I said, hey, uh, pet shop owner, please can I have 12 bees? And he counted out 13 and put them on the counter. And I said, hold on, this won't be too many there. And he went, oh, that one's a freebie. You are welcome. <laughs> Who have I got to? I don't even know. Right, plant, uh, plant nectar-rich flowers for the bees, and they will really thank you for it. And you can put those uh, flowers right near your bee hotel, and then they'll be able to find it super easily. Okay, are you ready for my last one? Go. Okay, last one is the most easy one, my final one. Super simple. Please just allow a little patch of your, uh, a little area of your patch to go wild. Yes, I am giving you complete permission to just leave it alone. 
The wildlife love it. If the weeds and the brambles grow, you could chuck in a log pile into the area. You could throw on a handful of wildflower seeds so it won't half look pretty, even though it's a little bit less, a little bit more messy than the rest of your garden. It will attract so many different species you get. You could also make a big uh, insect hotel in it and you can use all the sort of messy bits that are around your garden to make a great insect hotel. All those things like old bits of bark, old roof tiles, bricks, stones, hay, straw, dry leaves, all the sort of stuff that's lying around and looking a bit messy. Use that to create a space for wildlife. The more tiny little different shapes, size and spaces um, for them to like go and hide in, the happier they are. And you'll be helping all sorts of things like spiders and amphibians amphibians and reptiles and small mammals and birds you'll be doing such a good job for the planet so those are my five super simple ideas of how you can attract wildlife into your patch and if you aren't able to do any of those things it's not a problem I would just urge you to look for wildlife because I promise you you might think there's nothing where I live but I promise you there are tiny little mini beasts going about their business wherever you look. All you need to do is turn over a stone and you'll probably find ants or other little creatures going about their business. You could dig in some soil and you're pretty likely to find a worm or a beetle. You look up into the sky or into a tree and you will see the birds being busy. At this time of year in the spring, if you see them with little twigs in their beaks, they're off making their nests. They're getting ready to have their babies. So we might be aware of everything is a bit different at the moment. Nature is carrying on. And I think to find that little bit of headspace to just get that moment of calm for your brain to be able to just watch nature and forget some of our worries for a minute does us the world of good. So I would encourage you just to open your eyes and have a look and enjoy the wildlife that is right on your doorstep. Um, I've got a few minutes left. I don't, know whether, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with the last few minutes, just to remind you really, oh, this is me. I'm just gonna have another little sip of water before I go. Mm. Uh, so those are my little channels. If you wanna come and find out what I'm getting up to, there you go. I'll leave that there for a second so that you can uh, find me on any of those things. Remember, Lizzie has got loads of great speakers coming up. She's had such interesting subjects by such great speakers. So uh, these Earth Live lessons are available for you to use over the next few months. I hope you will all stay happy and safe and well. Keep washing your hands and let me know how you get on with attracting nature to your patch. I really want to hear about it. Thank you for watching, everyone. Bye.